God is good all the time, and all the time, God is good. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Even in a pandemic, the Lord is good. Amen. Scripture says, for the Lord is good, and his mercy endures forever. Hallelujah. We thank God that he's not restricted by time or season. As a matter of fact, he steps out. He's outside of time. He created time. He's not governed by time because he created it. So we thank God for his, for his eternality, if that's a word. Can you let me use it as a word? He's eternal, and everything about him is eternal, and we give God the glory and the honor for the privilege of being here today. Amen. Amen. How many, you need to understand this. There are people who are more skilled than you, who are more educated than you, who are healthier than you, come on, that are not here today, but you are. And that means that God has a plan and a purpose for your life. He still, he still desires to get the glory out of your life. Amen. So I want to talk to somebody right now who may be sending out uh, invitations to a pity party right now. Listen, give God the glory and give him the praise for what you already, for what he's given you today. Amen. Because it could have been the other way. Amen. I don't, I don't know who that's for right now, but somebody, you need to come up out of that stupor. Come out of that. Yeah, you got every reason to be down. You got every reason to be discouraged. But this is the day that the Lord has made. Hallelujah. The Bible says we will rejoice and be glad in it. Amen. Father God, we thank you. We thank you. We thank you for your love, for your grace, for your mercy. Thank you for holding us and keeping us like you have time and time and time again. We pray now, Father God, that you would just continue to prepare our hearts. Thank you for this atmosphere of worship. Thank you for this, this, this moment right now we have to enter into your most holy place. And Lord God, we know that if we enter in, God, we won't leave out empty. Thank you for filling us with your spirit right now. I pray for every soul right now, every dry and thirsty soul, that you would nourish, that you would water. Hallelujah, that you would plant new seed, oh God, that, that fruit might be produced in their life in the name of Jesus. We thank you, Lord God. I thank you. I pray specifically for my brother, my sister, who grown weary in their well-doing. I pray now, Father God, that you remind them that there's a reaping coming if they faint not. I pray and I declare by faith no fainting seasons in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Bless us as we enter into this time, Father God, of impartation, of revelation. As I stand as your vessel, God, use me in a mighty way that your people might be blessed. I thank you right now, God, for bringing clarity, for bringing understanding to your, to your word today. And allow us to find the handles by which we can put our hands to it and let it lead us into greener pastures. Let us lead, let it lead us into better places right now. In the name of Jesus the Christ we pray. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. I hope you came with an expectation. I hope you came with a desire to do and to be better in the name of Jesus. Because there's no way, hear me when I say this, and this is a bold statement, but I believe it in my heart. There is absolutely no way you can spend time with God and not be changed. There's absolutely no, listen, hear what I'm talking to you. Hear, hear what I'm saying. There's no way you can spend time with God, time in his word, and leave the same way. Amen. I had to, I've, I've had the privilege for the last couple of days to, to, to have, to have a, 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 a time of, 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 of Bible study, a time of, of devotion with, with my good brother, uh, Aaron Murphy. Amen. And, and we get up in the morning, and, and, and I'll be honest, we, we go through the Proverbs, and we have, we have yet to crack verse 4. <laughs> because, because there's so much that God unfolds. When you, when you decide to enter in, when you decide to, to go in to where, to where he has established himself, amen. Listen, I'm a, I, 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 this ain't this not on my notes, this not in the message, but listen, if you can wake up, you wake up in the morning religiously and turn on CNN, MSNBC, and you, and you leave out, you, if, if, if you leave the house, you leave the house confused, angry, bothered, heated. Nothing toward eternity has been established. 
And I'm not saying ignore any of those things. I'm not saying, I'm not saying be oblivious to any of those things. But I double dog dare you. Spend some time in the Word. Scripture says, thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee. There's something about getting into his presence. There's something about diving into his word. He has promised that you'll never be the same. So this is what we're getting ready to do this morning. We're getting ready to dive into the word of God. My expectation is that, that, that even now God is, is preparing the foundation, preparing uh, the, 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 next, the next layer to lay over you, to lay, to lay on you right now, to build you up on your most holy faith. And I pray that you get your, get your tent doors ready. We're going to do communion right after the message. But we're going, we're going to get into this word. Now, if, you do our, our, if you've been a part of the upper room, and I just want to say God bless and, and thank God for all those who are, who, who, who are a part of this fellowship. Listen, this house is one. It ain't, it, it ain't the only house, but it's one, of, it's one of the best places to worship God. Amen. It's one of the best places. And I thank God that even in the, even in the midst of, <clears throat> of, of, of a, a, a unfortunate season, in the midst of this pandemic, God still is growing his house. Amen. Amen. We are, we are, we were people, someone called and uh, texted me the other day, said, I like, I like to be a part of the fellowship. And so we just thank God. We thank God for his keeping power. We thank God how he's, how he's growing and building the house, even in a pandemic. You know, you, you, you know, you know, you're working with good stuff when it grows in spite of. Oh my God. So we thank God. We thank God for the opportunity. Let's do our Bible affirmation, our, our Bible affirmation. Uh, those you've been at the room, you know what it is. We're going to we're going to show it to you. Bible affirmation is o- it's always on our insert. We declare this because we believe the word of God to be, to be more than just a, a collection of stories, a collection of, of archaeological uh, <laughs> discoveries. This is the word of God. Amen. Let's do our Bible affirmation. Ready? Let's go. This is my Bible. It is the infallible, incorruptible, unstoppable, immutable word of God. It holds my peace, my victory, my breakthrough. This is my spiritual roadmap. This is my Bible. You believe that? Give God a shout right where you are. This is the Word of God. We're coming from Psalm 137. Psalm 137. And Deacon Bill, we call him Dollar Bill. Deacon Bill uh, Garnett read that uh, during our text. And we're going to read the verse 4, but... I'm going to tell you right now, we probably won't get through verse 4. Verse Psalm 137, the 137th number of Psalms, verse 1, says, By the waters of Babylon, there we sat down and wept when we remembered Zion. On the willows there, we hung up our lyres or our harps. For there, our captors required of us songs. And, and our t- tormentors mirth or laughter or joking, saying, sing us one of, the, one of the songs of Zion. How shall we sing the Lord's song in a foreign or a strange land? The word of the Lord is blessed. We want to consider, we want to concentrate this morning on verse 2. On the willows there, we hung up our lyres or our harps. And I just want to encourage the hearts of God's people just for a few moments by saying, don't hang up your harps here. Don't hang up your harps here. Father, we thank you. We thank you. We thank you. I was torn between two, two, two uh, uh, subjects, and we may interchange it. I like that one. But the first one that came to my mind is no matter what, keep your worship. No matter what. Keep your worship. Amen. We're gonna, let's get right into verse, verse, verse 1. We, when we look at verse 1, a lot, a lot has happened uh, up until this point. Israel has been uh, overtaken and taken captive by Babylonian, by Babylonian on, on, onslaughts. And these, these were, these were the, the, the enemies of, of God and of Israel who had been given permission by God, had been allowed to take them because of their rebellion. 
The Bible says a sin, uh, there's no, the sin without causeless, it does not exist. There's, there's nothing just happens just because. This was the, because of their rebellion, they were now being taken into captivity. And they're being taken into Babylonian captivity. And, and it was going to be for a number of years. And so they're, they're moving. This is the, this is the, 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 the march from, from where they were, from their homeland to the place of their captors in verse 1. And it says, by the waters of Babylon. Historians have said that they weren't in, they weren't in Babylon, Babylonian. They weren't in the place where they were going to be captive. But they were on their way. And he says, by the waters of Babylon. There we sat down and wept. There we sat down and wept when we remembered Zion. Now, ah, thank you, Lord. They were in a place <clears throat> by the waters of Babylon. They were in a place. Is, is historians have believed this, 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 this body of water to be the Euphrates River which broke off into different channels. And, and it, was, it was a river that flowed. It was an active river. And they're saying, by the, by the waters of Babylon, we sat down and wept. See if you can catch this. They were in a place of, of flow. The river was flowing. They were in a place of flow, in a place of movement, but they chose to operate in a different type of flow going somewhere please stay with me they were in a place of a flow but they chose hear what i'm saying please please stay with me don't tell me out. they chose to ferment we'll go somewhere we're going somewhere stay with me just for a moment they were in a place where it would have been natural it would have been the normal course to just go with the flow <laughs> to just move along with, with, with the way things were already moving, but they chose to ferment. Now, I, always, I said, God, why? God, Holy Spirit, drop this in my spirit. Ferment, ferment. Now, there's only one way, only thing I know about fermentation, Aaron. It's, 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 you ferment cheese. You ferment grapes to make wine. It's, 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 it's a, it's a, it, involves, it involves fungus and mold. And, <laughs> you know, and, and, and it, it's, I said, Holy Spirit, drop the word ferment into my spirit. I didn't understand it fully until I looked it up. In addition to the, it, its biochemical reaction that we know with our cheeses and, and other foods and drinks, in addition to that biochemical reaction that changes or alters the state or composition of a thing, it also, ferment, ferment is also a state of unrest or commotion. It's definition. You say you can't you can't beat the Holy Spirit. He, he will teach. I said I didn't understand. I said why affirm it? What does that mean? And it, it, he's referring to the second the second meaning. It means a state of unrest or commotion. Ferment. Instead of going with the flow, they chose to ferment. They were they they had they had been they had been defeated and they were now taken captive and they were they were in a very real state of unrest and commotion. They were in a real state. It was it was it was their, their whole life had been up 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 ended. They their their way of life had been disrupted. Their freedom had been taken away and their city and temple had been completely destroyed. Sound familiar? The way of life before COVID, we were flowing, we were moving. Things were happening. We, we, we were just, just living our life, living, li you know, and living my best life. But then COVID came and it disrupted, it caused unrest and commotion. We could have been flowing. We were flowing. We were flowing, but, but, but they, they, they chose to ferment. That was a, the choice was made to ferment, to, 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 to be in a state of unrest or commotion. Please stay with me. I'm going somewhere here. It, it, was, it was here at, at, the, at, the, at the waters of Babylon. And Israel was in a state of fermentation. Something was happening. Unrest, commotion. They were no longer permitted to flow like they had been. They were no longer committed. They were no longer permitted to, to, to just move like they had been accustomed to. 
And many of us, we, this, 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 this pandemic and all the things that are happening, it has, it has upended our, 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 our normal course of life and the things we were permitted to do. We've not been able to, to do them. This, this, this was the reason for their, for their captivity in the first place because they were flowing. Flowing in, 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 in sin, flowing in, in, in unforgiveness. They were flowing in things that God did not want them to flow in. And I'm telling you, sometimes God will stop the flow. He'll stop the flow of, of money. He'll stop the flow of, of friendship. He'll stop the flow, especially if you're flowing in a direction that does not honor him. And so what you're used to flowing in, he says, I've got I to ferment you. I've got I to gotta put you in a place of unrest and commotion. I've got to disrupt what you think is the natural progression of things. And there's some of us, before the pandemic, we, could come, we, felt, we felt we could come to church when we liked it. We could come to church whenever we felt like it, whenever, whenever the mood struck or, or whenever we needed something from the genie God that we had in our minds, then we could just come whenever we wanted to. But God says, he says, that flow that you think is normal is not normal. What you think is, is, is the way it's supposed to be is not the way it's supposed to be. And so I got to ferment you. I got to cause a, a, a season of unrest and commotion. I got to shake up some stuff in your life. Have you been in a state of fermentation? <clears throat> I mean, we thought that the unrest and commotion were byproducts of, of, of the pandemic or of, of the election cycle, of, of the social unjust, injustice. But what if the unrest and commotion have been the result of what's been released in the spirit? What if the, what if the, 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 the unrest and commotion that we're sensing in our society, in our country, it, it's, not, it's not because of the pandemic. It's, it's not because of the election cycle. It's not because of the civil unrest. What if it's because what's been released in the spirit? The complacency of God's house. What if, what if believers have taken the gifts of God so for granted? That instead of understanding some of the things, our necessities for Christian living, for kingdom living, we, we, we've chosen to take what we want a la carte. And God says, no, that flow, that, the, 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 the flow of thinking, the flow of, the flow of consciousness that you have, I got to disrupt, I got to create a, a, a season of unrest and commotion to let you know this was not what I intended. There, he said, there we sat. There we sat down and we wept. When we remembered Zion. Zion is a symbol of the church. We sat down by the rivers of Babylon. We sat down and we wept when we remembered the church. When we remembered how we used to have church. When we remembered how, how, how we, we were able to come together and sing songs and sit beside. He said, when I think about, I, listen, I can't tell you how many times I've heard people talk about, I can't wait till we get back to church. I can't wait till we get back. I just missed the church. Well, you were some of the same jokers we couldn't find. You were some of the same wonderful worshipers who, who we, could, we saved a spot for and you never showed up. Ah, okay, okay, okay. They said we sat down by the rivers <clears throat> and we wept when we remembered, oh, when we remembered what it was like to come to church, what it was like to get dressed and, and, and step into the sanctuary, what it was like to hug, to hug the, 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 the greeters in the foyer, what it was like to high five, high five the, 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 the guys in the parking lot ministry, what it was like to have great grace. We, 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 oh, I wish we could get back there. But, 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 but when you had the opportunity, you put brunch over worship. You put the game over worship. Oh, I got to get ready. We got people coming. I, I'll go to church next Sunday. We, we, we'll put, and God says, I got to disrupt your 
flow, the flow, what you think is what you think is acceptable to me, what you think God wants, what you think gives God glory, what you think honors God. He said, I got to disrupt the flow of the thinking that you have. He said, I got to bring about some unrest and some commotion. They, while we sat, we cried. He said, quit crying. I hear, I hear, listen, I'm saying, quit crying about what you, what, 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 what you missed. God's doing something different. This action provoked verse 2. This action, all this action provoked verse 2. And we may never get out of verse 2. All this action, all of verse 1 provoked verse 2. They said on verse 2, on the willows there we hung up our liars. After we sat down and wept and reminisced about getting together and having old-time church, on the willows there, we hung up our harps or our lyres. Harps, lyres are symbols of worship. When I thought about how we used to have churches and how, and how, 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 how the deacons used to open us up with a call to worship and, and how the pastor used to preach, oh, I wish, I wish we were back there. And so all of that didn't provoke worship, it provoked a, oh, an abandoning of worship. When it should have made you want to press in. It should have made you want to dig deeper. It should have made you want to go farther. Verse 2 said they hung up their worship. Oh well. <laughs> Since we can't come to church, I guess I don't need my worship no more. The willow trees they, listen, they, the willow trees, they grow. And, and back in the south, we call them weeping willows. <laughs> because of the, the drooping of the, the leaves and the branches, they, they droop over. They look like, the, the, the tree looks sad. It looks like a sad tree. And, and willow trees grow best alongside large bodies of flowing water. We live next to the, close to the Mississippi River, and you can see, you can see weeping willows littering. The, the, the shoreline of, along the river because, because the willow tree grows best beside a flowing body of water. We call them weeping willows because of how they droop. These trees thrive off of the flow. <clears throat> they thrive off of the flow. And the, the, these Israelites we're, we're by the waters of Babylon in a strange land ha- taken captive. Not much positive is a, is, is, can be found in the situation. And you got willow trees flourishing because they thrive off of the flow. So some of us, some of us have developed an appetite for the flow of negative information and unholy behavior. Some of us have developed an appetite for for the flow of of the ungodly and the unholy as a result of of where this this pandemic and all the things around us have taken us. And so instead of developing a deeper passion for God, we've we've now gone with the flow of the negativity and now we developed an appetite and we're flourishing. Believers who, who, who name the name Jesus have done more complaining than they've done praying. Believe in this, in this season, in this time of being in a foreign place, because let's be honest, we ain't never been here before. We never been in, in a time of quarantine like this. We never been here before. And in this time, in the, when, when we should be pressing in, believers have forgotten how to pray, forgotten how to worship, and spend more time Feeding the negativity instead of, instead, of, instead of allowing God to take them into a deeper place. I done, I done lost about 50 or 60 of y'all already. But I'm, this, this message is, is, is for those who, who recognize the hunger and the thirst. You wonder, what is it? What, why can't I tap in? Because, because you've, you've learned, you, you've adapted an, an appetite of thriving on, on what God never intended you to flow in. 
We're thriving on the things that were never intended to feed us. And it's easy. It's easy to hang up my worship when I'm hung up on worry. (laughs) You missed that. Y'all missed it. You get that? It's easy for me to hang up my worship when I'm hung up on worry and the world. It's easy. It's easy for me to stop. It's easy for me to stop praying to God for not giving God the first fruits of my day. It's easy for me to, to not get in, the, get in the Bible first thing in the morning to put his word on my mind. It's easy. It's easy to turn on the TV and, and, and watch the talking heads instead of getting in his presence. It's easy. It's easy when I'm, when I'm, when I'm hung up on worry and the world. It's easy to hang up my worship. It's easy. I called, I called my brother. <clears throat> I called my brother uh, Friday. I called my brother Friday in Texas. And I want to thank, thank my brother for picking up, the call, picking up the phone call. I called my brother. We grew up together. I called him and I said, listen, I'm praying for everybody else, Jason. I'm praying for everybody else. And, and brother, I'm, I'm, a, I'm ashamed to admit it, but it feels like something I forget how to pray for myself. I'm praying for everybody else. I'm, I'm lifting everybody else's issues. I'm lifting up everybody else's burdens. It's, but God said, but, but Jason, it's like I forgot how to pray for myself. Somewhere along the line, I got hung up in the worry in the world. And I hung up my worship, my personal worship, my personal. We all need personal worship. Worship. We all need that that one-on-one time with God. I'm gonna talk. Let me tell you, leaders, leaders, hear what I'm saying, leaders. Don't you burn yourself out praying for the house and you forget to eat yourself. I felt, I felt it. I felt it, Ronald. I felt it. I felt that the 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 the, the, the I felt the the world caving in and the worry beginning to, and, and I was wondering what's going on. And if I had hung up myself, I had hung up my own worship. I had hung up my own. Now I ain't talking about nobody else. I'm talking about me. I hung up my own heart. Because, because I, I inadvertently got into a negative flow. Everything in my spirit says worship God, worship him, put, 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 set, set an atmosphere for God to come in. And I would find myself turning to CNN. Can I be honest with you? Can I, can I, can I talk to you f- like I'm really talking to you? I, I could hear the Holy Spirit say, set an atmosphere, set, set the scene, set the mood to spend time with God. And I would turn on C in, as my, my father-in-law would say, C in and in. C in and in. And I didn't think nothing was wrong with it, Aaron. <laughs> I mean, I mean, after all, I'm trying to be current. I'm trying to be abreast. What's the latest thing that's happening? When I need to tell you for the believer, the, the, we need to, the most current information we need to get is what is God saying? What is God speaking to me today? What is the word of God now? I'm not saying, I'm not saying ignore what's going on around you, but you got, you got to first fill up on this right here. And you, oh God, I'm not saying don't work. I'm not saying ignore what's going on around you, but you got to fill up what's in you. Because once you fill up what's in you, then you can handle what's around you. I know this is elementary. I know it might be simple, but somebody need to hear this. You can, you're trying to affect stuff outside of you, and you're dry on the inside. You're empty on the inside. And listen, you can't hang up your harp here. You got to press in. You got to press in. See, here's what, here's, 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 what, here's what the pandemic exposed. Thank you, Holy Ghost. The pandemic exposed that, it, that you could get in. You could get in when everybody else is worshiping. It ain't, it, it, it ain't, no, it ain't, no, it ain't no hard time to hook, up my, 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 to hook up my wagon and yours. Listen. 
That's it. That, but that, that, that's what it's for. That's what, that's what the fellowship is for. It's for that. To build. Listen, when, when I'm dragging, if I see you drag, I'll hook up my engine to yours. And, and we move together. I was glad when they said unto me. Let us go into the house of the Lord. Listen, that the fellowship is wonderful when you're feeling low. You can connect with somebody beside you. But what do you do when you're by yourself? That's what the pandemic, the pandemic, the pandemic said, I got to disrupt your flow on being dependent on other people. I got to disrupt your flow on being dependent. There's a hum here. Can we get that hum out? I got to de- I I diminish your dependency on being dependent on other people. He says, I, do you really know me? Or do you know me based on what your neighbor knows? Do you know me? Or do you, or do you, really, know, do you really know me for yourself? Or is your knowledge of me based on, 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 on the fellowship of the believers? And, and it's good for a season when you're a baby. And it's good for a season when you're a baby. But some of you, some of you are grown. You're, you're growing in Christ. And he said, I need, you, I need you to be able to stand on your own. And what this pandemic reveals Have you been perpetrating worship? When God's been wanting you to perfect worship. Perfect means mature, mature, to mature in worship. Two things, two, two things have happened during this time, this time of being in a strange land. Oh, my God. Two things have happened in this. Time. Some of us have, have, have become estranged to worship. And some of us have become more acquainted with worship. One of the two, you fit in one of the two camps. Either you become estranged to worship. What I mean, how do you know how do you know you become estranged to worship? When you when you, that that sense of his presence is no longer is, isn't as as strong, isn't as 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 intense as it once was. When the things of God, when, the thing, when, when things happen that should, that, that, that should move your heart and should move your spirit like it would God, when they don't move you no more. When you can hear that, that today another 70,000 people died as a result of COVID-19 and it doesn't break your heart. You might be estranged. But when you hear that, you begin to think about the families and the people who, who are affected by that news. And you begin to think about the souls. God, how many died who didn't know you? Then you might be acquainted with worship. Listen, I'm done. They said we hung up our harps on the willows there. Hmm. How did we get here? And how do we recover? <clears throat> this message does no good if, 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 if all I do is point out the problem and don't show you how to get out. How did we get here? And how do we recover? Number one, how we got, how we got here. We got here because, verse one, because we sat down. And got emotional. We sat down. We got comfortable in the mess that we were in. We sa- they said we sat by the rivers of Babylon. We there we sat down. How did we get here? We got comfortable staying at home. We got comfortable. Not having church anymore. We got comfortable. Not being in the fellowship of believers. We got comfortable. Not coming to Bible study. We got comfortable. Not not spending quiet time with God. We got comfortable. We sat down. This is how we got here. We sat down and we got emotional. We got in our feelings. How we got here. We got here. We got we got comfortable and we got emotional. That's how we got here. And instead of praying for our kids like we used to before they left to go to school, 
because they're having school at home now. I don't pray for them no more. I don't pray over them no more. Not knowing, <laughs> thinking, well, they're at home and they're not exposed to, to outside elements when they got a bigger element called the Internet. We sat down. We stopped standing. Ah, we stopped standing. We sat down and we got emotional. That's how we got here. So how do we get out? How do we recover? This and I'm done. How do we get, how do we get better? We got to stand up and we got to stay spiritual. We got to stand up and we got to stay spiritual. See, see, he, we sat down, which means we got comfortable. Standing up says, says that, that, that you can do, you're, gonna do, you're getting ready to do two things. You're getting ready to move or hold your position. You're either going to hold your position or you're going to progress. Standing. And so we recover. Got to make up in our mind. Either I'm going to hold this position of, of faithfulness, of righteousness. I'm going to hold this position of being, of being the man of God, the woman of God that he's called me to be. I'm going to press in and reflect more of his spirit than I did on yesterday. That's how we, we, we got to stand up and then stay spiritual. They sat down and got emotional. We've got to stand up and stay spiritual. This message hit me in my face. Aaron hit me, <laughs> hit me all upside my head. Because there are some areas in my life where I sat down and got emotional. Because the flow had been disrupted. Because God said, I need, you, I need you just to sit down there. See, you, my, you, you heard my phrase, let it marinate. God said, I need you to let it ferment. I need, what, what fermentation, thank you, Holy Ghost, what fermentation does, it literally breaks down. It's, in, it's an enzyme that breaks down more complex particles. Yeast and the mold and, and the, 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 the other, the, the, it, they break down the, the, the complex particles into, into sugar and other particles, other components. And, and God said, I need to, I, I'm beginning the fermentation process because I need to break some stuff down. Some things that you have. <laughs> you hear people when we talk about their, their relationship is complicated. <laughs> it ain't really complicated. Holy Spirit says, all those areas where you're saying your relationship with me is complicated, he said, I need to break it down. I need to allow the fermentation process to create something different. To create something ha, that, is, that is more like me than ever before. So God's breaking down some things in your life. He's causing the fermentation. Let me just tell you, listen, listen, fermentation is stink sometimes. It don't smell good. My grandmother used to make pickles. Her own pickles. And she, you pickle cucumbers. They start out as cucumbers. But the pickling process requires fermentation. And I made the mistake one day, and I opened one of them jars. Good God in heaven. But it was part of the process. And some of you right now, the area where you are right now, it don't smell good. But God's breaking some complex things down. He's breaking some things down that... See, the enemy, the enemy will love to cloak himself in complex issues, cloak himself in issues that, oh, it's, it's you know, my daddy or my mom or, or my past and all of this. And I'm not discounting any of that. But he wants to come, he wants to make it so complicated that you never really try to get to the root of it. He wants to make it so complicated to where you never get down to the issue. So God has to break up the flow. He has to 
put you in a place of fermentation where he begins to break down what the devil has convinced you was so complex. I was talking with somebody this week and they were talking about how their parents were verbally abusive and, and how they talked about his, his, he said his mother in her dying breath said, I hate you, and she died. And he's carried that. He's carried that. That last conversation. She used her last words to say, I hate you. And he has taken that and carried that with him. But the fermentation process, if he would allow it, would break it down. Since you <laughs> hurt people, hurt people. And the fact that she had no relationship with God could precipitate that kind of behavior. And you got, you got, you got, you got to understand if, if how can you expect someone to, to exhibit godly behavior and they don't know God themselves? God wants to break it down. Some of you right now, God's fermenting some issues. He's fermenting some things in your life. And they don't smell good. They don't feel good. But he said, but they're, they're, he said I, I have to change them. I got to change them. I have to change them so you can see what's really real. I got to break down all the complexities of it. Oh, I can't hear me. Lord, help me say it right. The devil loves, he loves to cloak himself in complexities to cloak himself in things that seem so big that they can never be touched but God says in his word he says he said I choose the, the simple things to confound the wise so God's he's, he's, I gotta ferment this I got I gotta break this down so you can see it for what it is in its simplest form it's distraction. It's a divisive tactic to separate you from God. It's intended, it's intended to run enough interference to where you say, the God that you were, were raised to believe as real, the God you see with your own eyes as real. These complexities that he's building, that he's, he's amassing around you, that he's weighing you down with, is to squeeze out the simple truth that God is real. And he has not made a mistake. Your responsibility, hold on to worship. Hold on to worship. Worship, see, worship is the worship of God. It's, 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 it's you affirming and reaffirming how worthy he is. And the devil would love to send calamity and frustration and, tra and trauma and trials to get you to no longer equate the value to God that belongs to God. But worship says, nah. -uh. Worship says, now he is, he still is God. Worship says, he still is holy. Worship says, he still is righteous. Worship says, he still is, he still is the king of kings. And he still is the Lord of lords. I may hurt sometimes, but he's still God. That's what worship does. That's what worship does. And if the devil can get you to hang up your worship, you no longer see God as he really is. You're not by yourself. That's another complexity that the devil tries to make you believe. You're not by yourself. The Bible says he's an ever-present help in your time of trouble. Right where you are, right where you are, right where you are, lift your hands right where you are. I sense the Spirit of God in here say, I'm going to release... I want to release some people right now. You've been taken captive. You've been taken captive.
But I need you to understand God needed to get your attention so you can understand that the current flow that your life is in was never what he intended. Father God, in the name of Jesus, I pray for every soul, every heart listening to this message right now and whatever captive state they're in, I pray that they see you like they've never seen you before. Whatever captive state that they're in, I pray in the name of Jesus. As you begin that fermenting, that fermentation process, the unrest, the commotion that they're going through is not without a purpose. Disrupt everything, every flow. Disrupt every thing that seems natural and reapply your supernatural reapply the kingdom standard yes yes reapply the kingdom standard in the name of Jesus and restore worship where they hung their worship on the last sorrow on the last pain on the, la on the last traumatic issue where they hung their worship. They hung their worship on the willow tree where they hung their worship on the last thing that brought them down. Ha, ha. Help them find their worship again. Help them find their heart. Help them find their worship again to reestablish you as king of kings and, and lord of lords. Help them find their worship again. In the name of Jesus. Amen. As we prepare for communion, get your elements together, get your elements. The power is not in the cracker or the juice. It's in our honoring what he says. He says, as often as you do this, do it in remembrance. As often as you do it, do it in remembrance of me. Listen to this. Listen to this. It goes on in that text to say, their captors said, sing us a song. They were, they were mocking them. They were tormenting them. They were, they were in essence saying, where's your God? Where's your God now? Sing us one of them songs about the God you said was going to deliver you. They were tormenting them. But here's something you might miss. Even though it was meant to be a taunt and a torment. It was a recognition that I know you to be a worshiper. Even their enemies recognized, we know you to be a worshiper. Their enemies were, they said, taunt us. They said, sing us one of them, sing us one of them church songs you always sing. Sing us one of them, one of them good foot stomping songs. We always, what, what they were saying was, they meant it to be a taunt, but it was meant to remind them, you're a worshiper. Ah, God, the enemy is trying to taunt you right now. But that taunt is simply to remind you, you are a worshiper. You are a worshiper. And what they meant to bring you down is literally going to bring you up again in the name of Jesus. You're a worshiper. You're a worshiper. You're a worshiper. You're a worshiper. Even the enemy knows you are a worshiper. Even the enemy knows you're a worshiper. My question to you is, do you know it? My question to you is, do you know it? Have you let the conditions of the season and the situation you in talk you out of your identity? You're a worshiper. Mama, you're a worshiper. Daddy, you're a worshiper. My kids ain't acting right. You're a worshiper. My marriage ain't going right. You're a worshiper. My money ain't right. You're a worshiper. You're a worshiper. 
Don't hang up your harp here. Do not hang up your harp right here. <laughs> Jesus. Sing us one of them songs. Go ahead, sing us one of them songs. What the enemy meant for evil, God turned around and made it good. They, they, that, they didn't know they were inviting their worst enemy. They were inviting, they were inviting their worst enemy, and they were inviting Israel's greatest weapon. Your greatest weapon is your worship. Your greatest weapon is your ability to say, God, I'm, I'm in a bad place, but I know you to be a good God. God, I'm in a tough situation, but I know you to be the King of kings and the Lord of lords. Hey, God. Devil, you shouldn't have let me worship. 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 Because I enter into his courts with thanksgiving. I enter. Ah. He shouldn't have let you worship. You just reminded me who I am, devil. You just reminded me who I am. See, you, you were trying to taunt me, but you set me up for my breakthrough. <laughs> hey, God. Yeah. Yeah, your greatest weapon is your worship. Your greatest weapon is your worship. Hear me. You don't believe me? A ask Israel around Jericho. Your greatest weapon is your worship. Ask, ask, ask the people of Jericho. It wasn't no weapon of mass destruction. It wasn't no bomb. It was a worship. It was a hallelujah. It was a thank you, Jesus. It was a glory to God that broke the wall. You don't believe me? Ask Paul and Silas. Ask Paul and Silas. And at midnight, Paul and Silas prayed and sang praises to God. In the prison, in the prison, in shackles. And suddenly, the doors of the prison were open. Your greatest worship your greatest weapon is your worship. Your greatest weapon is your worship. Let me tell you something. With your last dying breath, you should be worshiping. With your last breath, you should be worshiping. Because that is where your power is. I may not know where my next is coming from, but I know who can supply it. Twenty twenty has been a year. It's been one. It's been one. It's been one. But I'm convinced the devil was trying to take take your worship. He was trying to get you to hang your heart on your last low place. But here, I'm here to tell you, take your worship back. I'll take that. I'll take that. As we move into our communion, we prepare ourselves to remember the sacrifice that Christ made for us. I want you to search your hearts right now. Search your hearts right now. And allow God to quicken and make alive those things that time and situations and circumstance have lulled to sleep. Let him quicken. Let him make alive. Let him wake up those things that circumstances have put to sleep. Some of you need to repent of your anger, your unforgiveness, your hatred.
our social injustice that's happening in our country, in our nation, I had to keep myself from getting, becoming hateful. And the Holy Spirit had to tell me, don't, don't try talking to me if you can't talk to your brother whom you see every day. Because the Bible says, how can you say you love me whom you've never seen and hate your brother whom you see every day? You got to take that to God right now. Examine that right now. God, take this, this animosity. Take this out of my heart. Remove it from me because it's bringing separation between me and you. You can't take the table with any effectiveness with those things tabled on your heart. Hallelujah. So as we take it, get your, get your elements Get your elements. Very few of us here in the room. Take your elements. Whatever it is, get you some apple juice, Ritz cracker, some saltine. Doesn't matter. Doesn't really matter what the element is. It's a point of contact. It's a point of contact. Hallelujah. Glory, glory, glory. I love you. Just want to tell you that I love you more than anything. Ah, my God, my God. I love you, Jesus. I can't, I can't talk for nobody else. I worship you. And I adore you. I just want to tell you that I love you. I love you more than anything. I love you, Jesus. I worship you. And I adore you. I just want to tell you Lord, I love you more than anything. I love you, Jesus. I worship and I adore you. This is coming from my lips, from my heart. Lord, I love you more than anything. if you hadn't got it by now you can transform your living room into the sanctuary transform wherever you are into a sanctuary yes the gathering is desired but if we can't come together we should still be able to enter in you missed it if we can't come together we should still be able to enter in. Because in actuality, this ain't the church. We are the church. And I need, I'm not, try, I'm not trying to condemn you, but I need to tell you this. If how you worship him in private is drastically different from how you worship him in public somebody might be putting on I'm sorry can I say that is that if your private worship doesn't build you into your public worship you might be worshiping but it probably ain't God it's a relationship and you don't act sometime you're two-faced with somebody you're in real relationship with. The way you are with them in private is the way you are in public. Real friends will call you out on that. 
take your elements. Father God, we thank you in the name of Jesus for this opportunity to partake in this sacrament, Holy Communion. There's no power in these symbols, but our gathering here, our, our recognition of the table. For you said, as often as ye do this, do it in remembrance of me. The power is not in the taking. The power is in the remembering. The power is in the acknowledging. We acknowledge your sacrifice. We acknowledge your blood. We acknowledge your body being given over as ransom for our payment. And so in taking this, we reestablish our connection. We reaffirm our our linking of heart and spirit. So right where you are, take this wafer which represents his body, whatever it is, take it and eat. Hallelujah. In the same manner, take this juice which represents his blood. Blood that was shed for our sin. The juice is not the blood, but it represents the sacrifice. And in taking it, we reconnect ourselves. We reestablish the connection. The things we were hung up on, the world, unholy behaviors, this reconnects us tangibly with God. Take it and drink. The body is now remembered. We're brought back to oneness. I'm going to tell you this. You don't have to wait till first Sunday. You don't have to wait he says, as often as you do. If you need to be reminded of your connection, need to be reminded of your communion with God. And remember, communion is a common union. It's a, the basic connection. If you need to be reminded, what is my basic connection? It's his blood. It's his... It's him paying the sacrifice. And if he paid the sacrifice for your life that you might live again, then it behooves you. It, I know that's, it should become your desire to want to live a life that honors his sacrifice. We're out of here today. Thank you for watching. Thank you for being a part of our fellowship, our online worship. Don't hang up your heart here. Keep worshiping God. God bless you. We love you. We'll see you next time. church. I've been given the opportunity to present to you today the too good to be true news of Jesus Christ. You know, the misconception about going to heaven is that a lot of people think that if I'm just a good person, then I get to go to heaven. But that's not true at all. The Bible teaches us that the wages of sin is death. And the only person who can counteract that wage is the blood of Jesus Christ. So if this is you, if you have not received Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, I want to give you this opportunity to receive him right here, right now. If this is you, 
Repeat after me. Say, Father, I confess I'm a sinner and my sins deserve death. But I believe Jesus, the Son of God, died for my sins. He rose three days later. I confess with my mouth. I believe in my heart. Thank you, God, for saving me. If you prayed that prayer for the first time, we believe you've been born again. If this is you, reach out to us, comment below. We want to talk with you and help you in these first initial steps of a brand new life in Christ. God bless you.